Hello, I'm Jonathan Dunsky, author of The Adam Lapid Mysteries. On this channel, I talk about crime fiction that I read and enjoyed. And today I'd like to tell you about a psychological thriller set in Australia, Tell Me Lies by J.P. Pomera. This is the first novel by J.P. Pomera that I've had the pleasure of reading or, in fact, listening to. I listened to the audiobook and I quite enjoyed this short and very entertaining thriller, so I'm going to tell you about it today and what I liked about it. So the story begins on a train platform in Australia and the uh, narrator of the story, uh, a psychologist called Margot Scott, is, well, she sees one of her patients on the train platform and she pushes that patient in front of a train. And so we don't know what compelled her to do this heinous act, but then we're thrown back in time to about a month before this incident. And this is where we begin our story, the story that will end with this uh, pushing of, of this patient in front of a train. So Margot Scott is a psychologist uh, in her 40s, she seems to have a very stable and happy and good life. She is married to a man who loves her and with whom she gets along. And she also loves him. And they have two teenage uh, children, a boy and a girl. And she has, uh, you know, she has her own house and she uh, has uh, her own practice as a psychologist. And... In that practice, she has, of course, a number of patients. We get to meet three of them. One of them is a young uh, woman who is very unstable and uh, shaky and seems to be unreliable as well. Uh, the second one is, is a man who works as a content moderator for a social network, which means that he spends his uh, working hours viewing images and videos that are violent or sexually explicit and are otherwise not fit to be shown to the general public. And this affects him. And this is partly why he now goes to, uh, to a psychologist. And the third uh, patient or the third client is, is a brilliant young student who was expelled from his university because he was, uh, or at least he was put on probation from that university. Um, because he was uh, writing papers for other students and making money that way. But because he's so brilliant, uh, one of his professors uh, is now paying for his sessions with Margot in an attempt to uh, rehabilitate the student and to somehow get him back into uh, his regular studies. And... Margot is very caring uh, about, her, about her clients and she is also a good mother. Um, but we also get to know fairly early on that there was a case uh, early in her career which ended rather badly and which still bothers her or troubles her. It sort of pops up in her mind on, on a regular basis. And we get to know more and more about this uh, this this case, uh, this particular client from way back in her uh, early career, we learn more and more about it as the story progresses. And we also see Margot as, as a person who seems to have some sort of issue with her uh, professional boundaries. She gets uh, easily attracted to uh, the third client that I told you about, this student. And he doesn't hide the fact that he is also attracted to her. And this is something that sort of gradually escalates as, as the novel uh, progresses. So, and, and this is also where we get to learn that even though she has a good marriage, this is a marriage that has lost, uh, let's say, its, the, its excitement. She has, it's sort of, it's sort of in, in a routine and, and this person sort of, this client sort of uh, 
sort of gets something sparked within her again and she is fighting with this or against this attraction. Uh, at some point, uh, someone is, is, is uh, trying to wreck Margot's life and this uh, and even goes to the, to, the, uh, to the point in which they set fire to her house. And she suspects that someone in her life, someone among her clients, is behind this attack on her, on her family, and is trying to ruin her for some reason that she uh, is not aware of. So this is basically, the, let's say, the framework of, of the novel. And I found it to be rather entertaining. Um, the author does a good job at revealing things gradually and sort of teasingly as, as the story progresses. And, and, we, and Margot, even though she is not a, a, a perfect character or a perfect person, is someone that I found myself sort of rooting for, even though she does uh, certain things that are unprofessional. And she also has this, let's say, dark secret in her in her background, in her past. I listened to the audiobook um, and it was narrated beautifully. And I think that, and the audiobook was about six and a half hours long, if I, if, if, if I uh, recall correctly. And I think this was a good length for this sort of novel. Any more than that, and it would have bogged down and, and the pace would have been slower. So this is not the sort of novel that will uh, you know, change your life or that will, uh, will get you uh, to think about it for weeks after uh, you've read it or you've listened to it. But it's certainly entertaining and I think that this is what it was designed to do, to just uh, be an enjoyable read, a fast read or a fast listen, an enjoyable listen. And it does so beautifully. So if you're looking for something that's short and, and light and kind of creepy at times and, and, uh, and just enjoyable, this is a pretty good choice. And it has a terrific twist at the end, a twist that, is, uh, that took me by, by surprise. So I'll leave a link in the description below to where you can find a copy of Tell Me Lies. And let me know in the comments if you've read this novel or if you can recommend another psychological thriller that you think I will enjoy. And if you enjoyed this video, consider giving it a thumbs up and subscribing to the channel. You'll get notified when I post my next review. So thank you for watching the video. I'll see you in the next review.